possibly just open warrant. I think he hadn't tried it sufficiently and actually customized it to fit, to fit his, uh, his habits or his workflow in general. Uh, but I, I, I heard, you know, my, my dad's using KD and he's, he's pretty happy with that. Uh, and I suggested to uh, the team, you know, we should try and give it some time, try to find a way to work with it in a way that suits you, because KD is very, very customizable. It doesn't do things the way you'd expect it out of the box unless you've got all the settings. I mean, I put all my settings in a back in a way that's kind of allowing me to restore the settings the next time I install KDE, so I don't have to do much work. Most of the things are already in place uh, from the uh, dot, dot, dot files and dot directories and everything else. Uh, so all the, the settings, you know, how the windows should behave, what it should look like, the colors, the, uh, the, the way the desktop is designed, the panels, everything else requires you to do quite a bit of work, especially if you don't really know the GUIs, although these two are being simplified. Every there are some tools like Inworld that help streamline that if you're completely new to it. <laughs> yeah, well, people have to know about these things, and I, I think once you mention this, that's just the name to them. They're like, I don't know what it looks like, I've never used it before, and where they get it, how do I download it, is it difficult to do, or is something great? Uh, but if, if a person's not a KDE user, maybe they can just find the whole thing frustrating and say, oh, I'm going to go back to GNOME or something. That's, that's the comfort zone. Okay, well, my observations of KDE. Um, I'll explain the distro first. I uh, got a copy of uh, PC Linux off, and I have to say, it's an absolutely fantastic distro. It's one of the very few distros that I've installed, which has basically been how I would set up my system in terms of the, the packages and what was installed as default. There was very little modification I had to, had to make, and uh, very, very few silly duplicates uh, in there that you often get with a lot of distros that seem to package every single variant of a web browser into, into one menu. Um, so that was very good. And it put me in mind very much of Ubuntu 804 LTS uh, when I first installed that and had everything presented me on the plate, everything was solid, stable. It's a really great distro. I can't understand why it's not getting more attention because it really is out of the box, simple. It's a and very stable. small community. I mean, Techstar, I can't remember his first name now, but the person who calls himself Techstar is the main person behind his distro. And he kind of disappeared for a year, maybe two years, after he had made it like one of the, well, he was ranked number one in distro watch, not, not just for a week, but, you know, for a long mm. period of time. Uh, so this was a very successful distro, but it's just a very, very small team, and, and they don't have much of a commercial backing that's kind of supplying loads of wages or something to quite a few of the key developers. And the early, I think that one of the, the spirit of the distro, it's a bit like Mandriva without the, without the Mandriva, the company. But, well, when they first started it, yeah, and, and there were a lot of people that criticized them for that. They're actually not Mandriva based anymore. Okay. I mean, so. more, probably more important or more relevant to the discussion would be my views now on KDE. And uh, having tried it it's, uh, and spent a bit of time with it. I'll certainly be keeping it on the system. I sent it just before we came on the show that I'm going to be keeping it on the system if nothing else to keep an eye on KD in the future. In the past I've been very guilty of uh, going through it for maybe a couple of days and then dismissing it and going back to my home or recently uh, XFCE. For me KD has got some major issues and it's probably obviously the way that I'm used to working and things but I'll start off with the good things. Firstly, my desktop now looks exactly like my old home desktop is, um, apart from a little KDE icon to the top left-hand side of the screen. Um, I've got my little applet which has my running applications up to the right, my virtual desktops up on the right-hand side of the screen, and my clock up on the right-hand side of the screen on one of my taskbars. I have two taskbars. Never like the single uh, vanilla KDE taskbar at the bottom. Look too cramped. Then on the bottom, I have what can be only described as maybe a sort of static, a static Unity taskbar with all my icons, my favorite applications, and uh, the logout button on the bottom right. I'm going to put this on as a screenshot for the show notes so you can have a little look. And I've got a lovely piratey desktop theme in the background. That in itself was, a, for me, a battle to get, uh, partly because obviously I haven't used KDE that much, and I briefly just glanced over it. But secondly, KDE has to be, singly, the most complicatedly difficult uh, process to get anything working. And I'll give you an example why. The first problem I had when I installed my distro, I wanted to change the clock 
from a uh, to a 24 hour clock. Now this isn't something that you would expect to be a big problem. When you install a new distro, you expect your, your graphic, your proprietary drivers, if you use them, won't be working properly. Maybe your Wi-Fi, uh, it, it won't be functioning properly. Maybe even a couple of packages will crash. What you don't expect to have, to have problems with is trying to change your clock to 24 hours. Now, fair enough, people will say, well, it's just a, it's a rather simple option to change. And, and the normal circumstance, if you can own more XFCE, presumably it would be, You'd right click on your clock or left click, get up an option screen, select your settings and change it to 24 hours. KDE doesn't do it that way. And it took me well, the best part of the evening and asking quite a few people who, funnily enough, were apparently KDE uh, long time users and didn't, couldn't give a straight, uh, couldn't tell me exactly how they did it. Um, it took me about an evening to find out how to change my clock to 24 hour, which eventually was found in the menu under regional settings. Um, that wasn't very intuitive to me. Uh, why can't it be under the right click options? So that was a, that was the first issue. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a very. Uh, you're talking about a specific widget here. So well, it's I, I tried. I, I tried to one of the other widgets, and that didn't work at all. So in no, uh, I, I, unfortunately, I know exactly what he's talking about because I like a 24-hour clock too. And he's right. It's in a counterintuitive place. Instead of being with the clock, you have to go over into the system settings thing. Yeah, and depending on how your distro set it set it up, you sometimes have to log out and reboot to get it to take effect. <laughs> well, that, that was, I mean, so that, that was that was my first. Now, I got, I got actually quite cross in the IRC channel at this because, you know, of all the things that you expect to be a stumbling block when installing a new distro, getting a 24 hour clock is not one of them. You know, it's it's, it's a bit of a bitter pill to swallow. You know, if, if your graphics drivers aren't, uh, aren't functioning correctly, fair enough, that's, a, that's an issue that you, you know, it takes a while to overcome. But when you're stuck on a point where you, um, you can't get your clock back into 24 hours, that's really quite insulting to yourself, really, and you're thinking, what on earth am I doing wrong here? And it put me in mind, actually, when I was doing all this clicking and pointing and cursing, of um, one of the old 16-bit point-and-click adventure games where you would end up clicking around the screen for a bit to try and find a secret panel to open up the door to get onto the next level. Well, I finally discovered that next level on about seven layers of menus, and obviously I'm happy now. That was one issue. The other issue I had came with the taskbar and uh, putting icons onto it. Now... I don't know whether this is some sort of unique form of artificial intelligence or whether the thing was just trying to wind me up on purpose, but it's got a rather unique justification system on the taskbar itself. And what I mean is some of the icons seem to want to be justified, some of them wanted to be pushed to the left-hand side of the screen, and some of them wanted to be pushed to the right-hand screen. And what I had in the end was a battle with um, using spacer bars uh, in between my icons to be able to juggle my icons that they didn't sort of all shift over one side of the screen or all shift over the other side of the screen. And that worked lovely until I switched the machine off and came back on again to find being reset and put back to the way it were. So that took a while to, to sort out. And yeah, you do have to you have to get used to the idea of clicking the edit plasma tool thing and just well, going around. Yeah, you don't it, use the spacers or you get the result you're talking about. Oh, it, it was mad. And to be honest, to this day, I'm not quite sure how it all worked in the end. I think possibly my threat to wipe it off the system probably kicked the uh, system back in the line and, and made it put the icons in the right place. But it's working now. And joking aside, I'm, I'm being rather flippant about some rather sort of basic problems. It's, I do actually now, having set it all up as I wanted, I do actually like KDE, and I think my past comments of, and my past uh, dismissal of it, probably justified in the sense of how long it's taken me to rest the beast to become tame, but in hindsight now, as I've got it set up, I'm very, very happy with it. I'll send to Roy in uh, the RC channel, I'm actually, I'm actually liking it a lot, and it's been rock solid, it's been stable, rock solid, there's been no graphical glitches uh, or anything yeah, like that. So, so you use a graphics card? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm running the card. Yeah. Well, and, and, and actually, I think unintentionally he's answered his own question about power slash advanced user. When you start customizing all this stuff, you get into that, and it's, I'm sorry, at times a system makes you work a little bit for that. I wish, I wish none of them made you work for that, but when you start getting into, I want this here, you sometimes get in a boxing match with the system. I mean, so in some cases, instead of moving a window around over the course of a year, you might move a window around a thousand times. If you spend half an hour during window-specific options, you could save those thousands of times, potentially several hours worth of moving things around, you know, in just a few minutes. I mean, I, I'll say something else as well. What I did traditionally hate about um, 
play the game's widgets. I actually now, once I've tamed it, I've seen the benefits. And I think the integration of applications onto the desktop is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I was saying, I think I was saying this again to Roy in, in RC. Um, far, I'm actually 